I will now talk about how we solve a specific type of recurrences that we call linear homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficients. This is very important because many of the recurrences we've seen, for example, the, the Fibonacci series and uh, other recurrences are usually linear homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficients. And luckily, we have actually formulas and theorems that allow us to solve them in a systematic way. So what is a linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficient? It is, it is a recurrence of the following form where a sub n, a sub n is, is a linear combination of the previous k elements, a sub n minus one, a sub n minus two, all the way to a sub n minus k. It is linear combination, so you will not see a sub n minus one squared or anything like that. And each one, the coefficients of them, the c1, c2, all the way to ck, are uh, constants. Okay, they are not a function of n. So for example, a sub n, n sub n minus one, this is not linear homogeneous recurrent relation, recurrence relation, okay? Because this is not the constant coefficient here. The same thing, a sub n equal two, a sub n minus one plus three a sub n minus two, plus n squared, this is not a linear homogeneous recurrence relation. Yes, these are constant coefficients, and yes, this is linear combination all the way to here, but this is not allowed in our, in our uh, definition of these, uh, of these recurrences, okay? So something like this, which we have seen, this is, uh, this is the, the right type of recurrences for us. And something like this, is also a, sorry, 5a sub n minus 5. This is also linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficient, and this one is of degree 5 in this case, right? Because the c, c5 is 5, it is not 0, so this is a recurrence of degree 5. Okay. So the question is that how do we solve these ones? And here we are going to look at them first in, in, uh, for the case of two terms, okay? when, when we have only two terms, and then we go to the general case. So what does this theorem tell us? Let C1 and C2 be the two real numbers, and we are looking at the recurrence of the form. Let's look at this recurrence of this form here, A sub n is linear uh, recurrence in terms of A sub n minus 1 and A sub n minus 2, and times c1 and c2, these are the coefficients, they are two real numbers. Okay, so now we want to get the solution for this. And we look at this equation here that we call the characteristic equation. This is what we call the characteristic equation. Okay, it's a quadratic equation, r squared minus c1r minus c2 equals zero. Remember the c1 and c2 are the constants in the recurrence itself. So we solve this characteristic equations and suppose we got two distinct roots, R1 and R2, okay? So we have R1 and R2, they are different roots. Then we say that the sequence A sub N, this, this one is a, is a solution for the recurrence if and only if A sub N equals alpha one times the first solution, the first root R1 to the power N plus alpha two times the second root to the power n for every n equals zero, one, two, so on. So what is this saying? What this is saying is that if you, if you wanna have a sub n, a specific a sub n to be a solution to this recurrence, then you better have a zero must be equal to alpha one plus alpha two, right? Because r one to the zero is one, r two to the zero is one. Alpha one equals sorry, A1 equals alpha 1, R1 plus alpha 2, R2. A2 equals alpha 1, R1 squared plus alpha 2, R2 squared, and so on. So if you have a sequence of this form where alpha An equals alpha 1 times R1 to the N plus alpha 2, R2 to the N, and this is the case for every N from 0 to infinity, then this sequence, this sequence here, the A0, A1, A2, 
is a solution to the recurrence a sub n equals c1 times a to the n a sub n minus 1 plus c2 a sub n minus 2 okay so let's see an application of this and again remember this r squared minus c1 r minus c2 equals 0 so here we have this recurrence it is a linear homogeneous recurrence with constants right with constant coefficient c1 is 1 and c2 is 6. so what do we want to solve here what is the characteristic equation the characteristic equation is r squared minus c1 r which is r and minus c2 which is 6 equals 0. we want to solve this if you try to solve this, this is r minus 3 times r minus 2, and we get 0. Sorry, r plus 2 right, equals 0. So we have one of the roots, and they are called characteristic roots. One of the roots is 3, and the second one is minus 2. Okay, So we have r1 equal 3, r2 equal minus 2. Now, what does it, what did we say that, what did the theorem tell us? That a sub n equals alpha 1 r1 to the n plus alpha 2 r2 to the n is a solution if this is true for n equals 0 1 2 for this recurrence okay so a sub let's the, this is where the initial conditions come into the picture what is a sub 0 a sub 0 is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 and we know by the by initial condition that uh, a sub 0 is 2 right what about a sub 1? a sub 1 is alpha 1 r1 and r1 is 3 plus alpha 2 times r2 which is minus 2. This equals 8, right? So we have now two equations, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is 2 and we have 3 alpha 1 plus, sorry, minus 2 alpha 2 equals 8 right uh, yeah so r2 minus r squared minus r minus 6 equals 0 we get these two r1 equals 3 r2 minus 1 and then we have we have these two equations now I can solve this for example we can take that alpha 2 is 2 minus alpha 1 and now 3 alpha 1 minus 2 times 2 minus alpha 1 equals 8 3 alpha 1 minus 4 plus 4 alpha 1 equals 8 and this gives me 7 alpha 1 equals 12 alpha 1 equals 12 divided by 7 if alpha 1 is 12 divided by 7 then alpha 2 is 2 minus 12 divided by 7 and this equals 2 seventh right uh, because this is 14 divided by 7 minus 12 divided by 7 is 2, 7. So now, given this, what is the solution to this recurrence? It is a sub n equals alpha 1, which is 12 divided by 7, r1, which is 3, 3 to the n, plus alpha 2, alpha 2 is 2 to the 7th, sorry, 2, 7, times r2, which is r2 is minus 2 here to the n so this is the solution to our recurrence this is how we use this uh, this uh, theorem okay again i want to just repeat because just let's make sure that we understand everything here c1 is this coefficient here c2 is this coefficient then we solve this characteristic uh, equation which is r squared minus c1 r minus c2 equals 0 so r2 minus r minus r minus 6 equals 0. Then we have r minus 3. This is the same equation as r minus 3 times r minus 2. So we get one root is 3, one root is minus 2. Now we have them 3. We have alpha 1 times 3 to the n plus alpha 2 times minus 2 to the n. So now we can look at the initial conditions and say alpha 1 plus alpha 2 must be equal to for n equals 0. Then we have 3, 3 times alpha 1 because r1 is 1 and minus 2 
times alpha 2 equal 8 and we solve and we get the solution to this okay now that we one 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 important or one interesting result is about the fibonacci numbers here so for fibonacci numbers remember that the, the recurrence is a sub n equal a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 and here we assume that a0 for example is 0 and a1 is 1 okay so now this is again a linear homogeneous uh, recurrence with constant coefficients so now c1 is 1 c2 is 1 here right so i need to solve r2 minus r minus 1 equals 0 if you solve this using the formula for quadratic equations you will get that r1 equals 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 and you will get r2 to be 1 minus square root of 5 divided by 2 and doing this now we can look at the solution in the following way remember that a sub n alpha 1 times r1 to the n so it will be 1 plus square root of 5 to the n and alpha 2 minus divided by 2 to the n and now we need to solve we can solve it for the initial conditions where a0 is 0 so this becomes alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is 0 right and we for a1 we have 1 so this is alpha 1 times 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 plus alpha 2 1 minus square root of 5 divided by 2 this must be equal to 1 if we solve these I'm not gonna go through the gory details of this here but if you solve them you get alpha 1 to be 1 over square root of 5 alpha 2 to be 1 minus 1 divided by square root of 5 so now the solution we know that the nth term in the in Fibonacci series if you want x if you want an explicit formula for it it is the alpha 1 times the r1 which is 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 to the n plus this is minus here so this is an explicit formula for, for Fibonacci series and as you can see it is not as nice or elegant as the recurrence formula but again you can plug in any value n here and you can get the you can get the result or the nth term for this formula okay and again it is all an application of the same theorem so the theorem that we just saw is uh, that we just saw here talks about the characteristic equation r squared minus c1 r minus r2 equals zero and it has two distinct uh, roots r1 and r2 what if it has only one right we can sometimes have a solution that is is uh, not unique not two distinct roots but what the same root here so we are saying here that if you have the same the same uh, root we have only one root r0 then with the solution to the recurrence becomes alpha 1 r0 to the n plus alpha 2 n r0 to the n it has to be true for every n equals 0 1 2 and so on okay so let's look at uh, let's look at uh, this uh, this uh, this theorem and an example of it what is the solution of the recurrence a sub n equal 6 a sub n minus 1 minus 9 a sub n minus 2 with these two conditions alpha 0 equal 1 uh, a 1 a 0 equal 1 and a 1 equal 6 so again we need we will solve the r squared minus c1 r minus c2 equals 0 in this case here we have r let me write it here we have r squared minus c1 is 6 and c2 is uh, is 9 is minus 9 so this becomes plus 9 equals 0 so this is r minus 3 squared equals 0 and r 0 equals 3 so we have a single solution for this for this one so what we know now is that this this the the solution for this is a sub n 
equal alpha one the 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 so this solution here the a zero sorry the r the r zero which is three to the n plus alpha two times n times the r zero to the n which is three to the n and this has to be true for n equals zero one two and so on so if we look at a sub zero this is alpha one plus n alpha two and this gives us for the for, for the first initial condition it gives us one alpha one it is three alpha one plus the for the second one here the three to the n times n n is one sorry i should actually sorry about that when n is zero this is alpha one but the second term is zero and the for a one and this must be equal to one and for the second one here alpha one three three alpha one plus the n is one times alpha two so three to the n alpha two this equals six okay so if alpha one is one then from this one here we can get three times one plus three to the n alpha three to the first here which is three times alpha two equals six so three alpha two equals six minus three alpha two is one so alpha one is one alpha two is one Therefore, we have a sub n is the alpha 1, which is 1 times 3 to the n, plus alpha 2 is 1 times n times 3 to the n, n times 3 to the n. Or in other words, so this is an explicit formula for a sub n. Okay, uh, So this is the case for two, for two, um, uh, two terms, and this is now a case for the more general for the more general uh, case of linear re uh, recurrences if i have a sub n now as a recurrence of in terms of the previous k elements and now i need to solve a different a different uh, characteristic uh, equation here r to the k minus c1 r to the k minus 1 minus c2 r to the k minus 2 all the way to uh, c minus ck equals 0 and from here we can now we can now solve solve this and the solution to this recurrence would be a sub n equals this alpha 1 r 1 to the n alpha 2 r 2 to the n plus alpha k to r k to the n and this has to be true for 0 1 2 all the way to infinity so for example we can look at at uh, this uh, this equation here or this recurrence c1 c1 is 6 c2 is minus 11 c3 is is six here so what we need to solve is the characteristic equation which is r cubed minus six r squared plus 11 r minus six equals zero and if you solve this uh, cubic equation you will get a solution that we have r equals one we have another one r equal two and we have r equal three these are the three characteristic roots of this characteristic equation okay so now the solution to this recurrence based on this <coughs> based on the previous theorem the solution to this recurrence will be of the form a sub n alpha 1 times 1 to the n alpha 1 times the first root to the n which is 1 to the n plus alpha 2 times the second root to the n which is 2 to the n plus alpha 3 times the third root to the n which is 3 to the n and the same thing as before, we, need, we can solve it now for the three uh, initial conditions. So A0, which is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3, this must be equal to 2. A1 is <coughs> when, we take, when we take the n to be 1. So this is alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 plus 3 alpha 3. This must be equal to 5. And A2, when we take the n to be 2, so this is alpha 1 plus 4 alpha 2 plus 9 alpha 3 and this must be equal to 15 okay and we can solve this once you solve it i'm not gonna do now solutions of linear equations for you here but 
If once you solve it, this will give you alpha 1 is 1, alpha 2 is minus 1, alpha 3 is 2, which basically tells us that a sub n, the solution is 1 to the n. This is the alpha 1 times 1 to the n, which is 1, right? And this is, actually, I don't need the n here anymore, 1. And we have plus alpha 2 times 2 to the n, which is minus 1 times 2 to the n, plus alpha 3 times 3 to the n, plus 2 times 3 to the n, okay? So this is the explicit solution for this one here. Now, this is, again, similar to the first theorem we saw where we had two, two roots, two characteristic roots that are distinct. The second theorem was when we have the same, we have just a single root. So now this is the general case where you have, we have, we have three different roots. And what about when we have multiple roots, but each of them can, can, can appear with, with uh, a multiplicity greater than one. So suppose I have, I have a, a polynomial of degree seven, and it has three solutions, not seven of them, three solutions, one, is with multiplicity two, one with multiplicity two, and another with mul multiplicity four. For that, we have this equation. It looks complicated, but it just talks about about a, the case for for general uh, linear uh, recurrences. In this case, what we solve is the same thing as before. We are solving the same uh, characteristic equation. But here, notice that we don't have k distinct roots. We have t distinct roots t distinct roots where t is smaller than k. If t is smaller than k, then some of these roots are appearing more than once, right? And this is the multiplicity. So imagine that r1 appears with multiplicity m1, r2 appears with multiplicity m2, all the way to rt appears with multiplicity mt. Of course, the sum of this multiplicity has to be k. And m sub, m, m sub i is greater than 1, of, greater than or equal to 1. Then what is the solution to this recurrence? The solution to this recurrence is this one here, a sub n. Now for the, for the first root r1 to the n, the coefficient in this case is, uh, I apologize here that this should have been, I, I did not close the, the parenthesis here, so there need to be a parenthesis here, and there needs to be a parenthesis here and here. So this is really the, the solution. So r sub 1 to the n is the sum of these coefficients where alpha 1, 0, alpha 1, 1 times n, alpha all the way to alpha sub 1, sub m1, m1 minus 1 times n to the m1 minus 1. So the m, remember the m's are these multiplicities. Okay, so let's look actually at an example of this to see what I mean by these multiplicities. So suppose we have this uh, this recurrence alpha a sub n minus a sub n equals minus three a sub n minus one minus three sub a sub n minus two minus a sub n minus three with these with these uh, conditions. So now the the characteristic equation we need to solve is r to the third plus three r r squared plus three r plus one equals zero. And if you look at this, this is just r plus one cube equals zero. So if it is r plus one cube, then we have just one solution, which is r equal minus one. With what is the multiplicity of this? So if I call this really r one, the multiplicity of r one is three, because this is r plus one times r plus one plus r plus one equals zero. So we get r equal minus one, the solution with multiplicity three. So if it is the, the solution with multiplicity three, then based on the previous theorem, a sub n is alpha one zero times the minus one to the n. Okay, this is the minus one is the r one in our case here, plus alpha one one times minus one to the n plus alpha one two, because we go all the way to n to m, m1 minus 1, so the m1 m one is 3, we go all the way to alpha 1 comma 2 times n squared here, n squared times minus 1 to the n. 
So this is basically the, the solution to this recurrence. And if I saw it, I need use I make use of the initial conditions a sub zero equals alpha one zero. If you think about it, it is the alpha one zero here, and this will be one and a sub one. Sorry, here this multiplied by n here. Okay, sorry, I apologize about that. This is multiplied by n. So this is why when a zero, this becomes this becomes zero and this becomes zero. And the first term is alpha one zero. A sub one is this is the minus alpha one zero minus alpha one one minus alpha one two, and this equals to minus two. And when we have where we have a sub two, this is where it is minus one, the and this is alpha one zero plus two alpha one one plus four alpha one two, and this will be equal to minus one. If we solve these, if you solve this, you will get alpha one zero equals one, alpha one one equals three, and alpha one two equals minus two. And this gives us the full solution, explicit solution for this, which is one plus three n minus 2n squared times minus 1 to the n. And this is the explicit solution to this recurrence. Okay, so what we have seen here in this lecture is that when I'm given when I'm given a homogeneous linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficients. Okay, so it is the, co the constants, the coefficients are constant, so we cannot have n times a sub n minus 1 or n squared or anything like that as a coefficient and also it is linear so we don't see any a sub n minus 2 squared or anything like that if we have this what we saw was a really a series of of theorems the first one was if we are talking about a sub n in terms of only a sub n minus 1 and a sub n minus 2 we solve what we call a characteristic expression and that characteristic ex expression is r squared minus c one r minus c two equals zero. We solve it. If you get if you get two distinct roots to that, we had the first theorem. If you get one root, you have the second theorem. Then from there we went to the case, the, the general case where we have where we have a, a characteristic expression that can have k distinct solutions, and we had the the explicit solution for such a recurrence. And then the very last one was, if I have a characteristic equation that of, of degree k, but I have, I have the, the k solutions are not distinct. In fact, we have a smaller number of distinct uh, roots, each one of, of them with its own multiplicity. Then we have a, a theorem that tells us what the solution to that recurrence would be. Okay. So this is the use of these of these theorems: is that when you are given these linear uh, recurrence relations that are homogeneous and the coefficients are constant, you can use any of these theorems. Of course, the, th the, the, the fourth theorem should subsume the second one that we saw, and the third should subsume the first one, because they are the general cases.